J.P. Morgan uh, and what Jamie Dimon just said. This is serious. J.P. Morgan's Jamie Dimon warns U.S. likely to tip into recession in six to nine months. It's interesting when he says six to nine months as if we're not in recession today. But when Jamie Dimon speaks, you at least have to hear what he is saying. Jamie Dimon said on Monday, warned that there's a very, very serious mix of headwinds was likely to tip both the U.S. and global economy into recession by the middle of next year. Diamond chief executive of the largest bank in the U.S. said that the U.S. economy was actually still doing well at present and consumers were likely to be in better shape compared with 2008 global financial crisis when the world tips into recession among the indicators ringing alarm bells. Diamond cited the impact of runway inflation, interest rates going up more than expected, and unknown effects of quantitative easing and Russia's war in Ukraine. Uh, being said. Now, there's a lot of other things. By the way, while this is happening, Bernanke gets a Nobel Prize, and Michael Burry just tweeted out this morning, a few hours ago, saying Bernanke gets the Nobel Prize in economics, not a joke, meaning they really gave this guy <laughs> a uh, Nobel Prize in economics after the way they did quantitative easing back in 2008. So, Tom, what are your thoughts about what Jamie Dimon just said about uh, recession being in the next six to 12 months? Well, first of all, remember, nine months. Jamie speaks for the banking industry, so there's some benefits to himself in there. He is not completely altruistic here. But the second part of it is he has been a fairly balanced barometer. You know, if, if I ever became president, I'd want Jamie Dimon to be my secretary of treasury because he's a balanced guy and he's pragmatic. And I think he's looking at a lot of the things here. I was looking this morning and there's some very interesting economic stats out that in the last 60 days, we've seen a tick down in spending on restaurants, travel, high and also what they they measure high end foods because they do this uh, average basket between like a Whole Foods and like a Albertsons. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Between the two different levels of it. And People are, interestingly, they're not budging on all their, uh, on Spotify, Netflix, Disney yeah. Plus, and Hulu. They're not budging, but they're moving off of restaurant spending and things. So I think the consumer data that's out there that Jamie's looking at is that the consumer is in, by the way, look what he says, better shape than the 2008 financial crisis. Well, that's like saying, boy, you look in better shape this week than uh, three years ago when you're fighting prostate cancer. Like, I mean, that comparison is pretty big because 2008 was was a huge, huge bomb going off. And I, I think he's right. Uh, and there's consumer data that's showing it and what people you know, are are spending. And I, I think, and we're seeing it in the real estate. The real estate market, Pat and I have been talking about this for how many months now? How many short clips have we got? VT short clips, go back and look at them, folks. We've been talking about this for a while. Housing prices now are starting to tip, and seriously tip. And what have we got for um, interest rates right now? I think it's officially six and three quarters, isn't it, Pat? For like a 650 yeah. Credit, so solid credit for a 30 year fixed mortgage. So, not too technical, just look at a typical mortgage like that. And we're 6.75% now, and it's not going to be a half a percent in December. It's looking more like it's going to be three quarters of a percent. So, I think Diamond is looking at consumers, he's looking at housing, and he's looking at a Fed that's going to move it again uh, December 10th to 15th. Bank rate, I just looked at it right now. Tyler, if you want to pull it up, 6.89 is the bank rate right now. It's almost seven. Third year fix, yes. Here we come. 6.88, about seven. Uh, I think it's going to get to 10%. And I'm, I'm, I said this a With while you. back. People thought I was crazy. I said gas prices are going to go to $10. They said, and I said this two years ago, two and a half years ago, you can't spend money like the way we did without prices going up and trying to fake it. It's just, it's not possible. And, and the biggest thing is, so this last week, I had a, a, some of the biggest money managers of Morgan Stanley Dean would have fly out uh, last Friday. They were here. We had a lengthy meeting together. And these are the best of the best at what they do out of New York. We had a very good meeting together. And then I had a meeting with uh, my Goldman Sachs folks as well the week prior to that. Let me tell you what both are concerned about. Um, both are concerned about the fact that this thing's not going to slow down. It's going to keep going down. They're not optimistic at all about 2023 whatsoever. Um, inflation is not going away. Powell said, we're going to keep increasing rates and keep them high until inflation hits what number? 2%. You know what inflation's at right now? Go look at what inflation's at right now. What's current inflation right now? Okay, current inflation right now, if you look at this, okay? 
Current inflation right now, if you look at it, is 8.3%. Uh, 8.3, 8, yeah, 8.3%. Wow. You know, if you go to current inflation rates, go from 2000 to 2022, click on the calculator right there. Let's take a look at this. Zoom in a little bit. Ah, oh, man, I wish we could go in to see. When's the last time we were at 2%? Wow. 2020. You know what it's going to take to get to that? It's going to take a while to get to that. It's not going to all of a sudden drop from 8.3 to 2%, mm -hmm. which means rates have to continuously keep mm -hmm. going up to bring this down. And the people in real estate and mortgages that think, yeah, Pat, you're just, you know, fear mongering. It's fear porn. You know, prices are not coming down and all. So really, prices are not coming down. The the Haida building, what's the Haida? What's that? The, the Miami building, the sexy building, oh, it's the, the woman's body. Museum, it's, uh, Hadid, 1, Hadid Biscayne. Yeah, okay, exactly. the 1,000 Biscayne, folks, just want to tell you this. Two years ago, year ago, 57th floor penthouse. It's 10,000 square feet. I looked at it. That penthouse, you know what it was worth a year ago? 30 million. Not 30 million. That's the top of the top of the top. It's the last floor. We looked at it together. Yeah. We looked at 54th floor. Mm. 57th floor just sold. That building right there. Oh my God. 57th floor penthouse with the only helipad on top of that building that was valued between 35 to $50 million. Just sold for $19 million last year. What? Just so you know that. So you can get dollars. a good deal if you want. I'll just yeah. fall asleep. And, 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 and I know people are like, oh my God, all these big numbers, all this stuff. No, no. This was built with the idea that the penthouse is going to be a $40, $50 million house. Penthouse just sold. This is the sexiest building in all of Miami. Is that even debatable? The Aston Martin building is not even close Correct. to this. All these other buildings, none of them. The, the penthouse, 57 floors. I've, I've lived in all five of those buildings except for the one in the middle. It was unaffordable. That's the building That's you're talking one. about. I've lived in every single one of those buildings. Yeah. Those so, are my neighborhoods. So, so the moral, the moral, the story, the moral of the story here is the bottom is not here. Yeah, the no. bottom is not here. People are like, oh, well, the, you know, the, the market recovered because of what's going on last week. No, the bottom is down here. People just got excited the fact that Elon Musk is going to be buying Twitter. That's what people got excited about. Yeah. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.